En Ben is, is inmiddels ook aangeschoven hier, dus we gaan hem wat vragen. Ben, welcome to Blues Moose Radio. Thank little, you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. A little thing about Ben Poole himself. Who is Ben? What, what is where he came from? Well, I'm from England. Um, I've been playing guitar since I was about nine years old. Um, influenced mainly by guys like Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, Jeff Healy, uh, all the guys that kind of all the guys that took the blues and made it more exciting and more accessible to a, a broader audience. Um, and I just love the energy and the passion that came across in their music. And I, I try and I try and bring that across in in what we do in my band. Well, you play now in, a, in your own band, the Band Pool Band or Band Pool, whatever it's called, but. You played before in some uh, pretty known other bands, like uh, Danny Wilde, you said. Yeah. Was it education or was it have a good job playing there, learning how to play the guitar? Exactly, yeah. I mean, it was great. Playing with Danny on and off for about four years was um, kind of my f my first... It, it was a good learning curve for me, um, being out touring Europe and, you know, doing doing some big shows and basically seeing what you know kind of learning what i was going to be then going out to do with my own band uh, you know every every gig we went out and did and i was like oh i can't wait to, can't wait till i can go and do this with my own group and get out on my own and be, be let off the leash a little bit and uh, you know go out and do my thing and have my creative input in you know in the music in the music side of things um well the creative input is there because you were nominated as uh, england's best talent for the uh, a blues award show in a uh, no show, or, uh, yeah, I don't know what it was, in, uh, in England. How, did, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, a real surprise to be up. Um, some really fantastic artists alongside me, you know, Ollie Brown and Chantal McGregor. And uh, yeah, I was, I was absolutely thrilled to be nominated. To be nominated as one of the, uh, the best young artists to come out of the UK. And um, my drummer Alan got nominated for best British blues drummer, and what my song "Everything I Want" got nominated for best British blues song. Um, I wouldn't say it's a very particularly blues song, but you know it's, it's blues roots. Everything we do, we're, we're not a blues band. We're not we're not blues purists by any means. Um, there's lots of different influences in there. A lot of rock, bits of soul as well. You know, I love Otis Redding and Donny Hathaway and. Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye and all that sort of stuff. There, you know, there's a lot of influences all pulled together. You know, whether it's soul or rock or blues or even country music. You know, bits of everything. Well, we noticed that our viewers and listeners of Blues Most Way, you can see and hear that the songs you play are very different. Even in one song only, you can uh, be as gentle as it is, and then it ends like in uh, a big orgasm of yeah. sound and music <laughs> and guitar, as we we call it. Yeah. Um, is it if you if you prepare a set, do you always make that change in a set in a, in, a, in a performance? That's all of everything a little bit. Yeah, well, for me, dynamics are hugely important. Um, That's a better word for it. Yeah. yeah, dynamics. You know, it's the um, the peaks and valleys. You know, like bring it right up and then bring it right down. You know, it's just uh, you grab the audience with the with the up here, the loud and. Um, bring it right down and everyone's silent and you, you can hear a pin drop um, and that's that's the beaut that's the beautiful thing in, in a gig when when you've got a room full of you know 100 150 200 people and everyone's completely silent and you know if one person was to talk you would hear it you know but everyone's listening to the music everyone's in, engaging with you everyone's with you in the in like really immersing themselves in the music and that, that's what we love i love that and you don't forget the audience because in the last song you're you're, you're getting into the crowd yeah get on the tables make yeah. them as well and, and but also there's a small audience because it's primarily a radio uh, recording we, we do but yeah. you, you gave it all let's say that yeah. if you want to make a song you all you all told i love the people who did something with the blues and make their own of it is that something you're absolutely keen about it to do it yourself yeah what, what what you mean taking a song and making it your own oh definitely definitely um there's not to, to me add, adding something new to it yeah yeah i mean um we do a few old soul songs we do a stevie wonder song an early stevie wonder song called i don't know why i love you um and we kind of really put our own take on it yeah i think there's no point in doing a cover i don't think in this sort of music unless you're going to put your own twist on it like um Probably the most well-known song that we cover is Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix and, you know, we do it completely differently, you know. Um, for me, lyrically, that song is a blues. 
you know so i thought why not let's a lot of people do yeah yeah let's turn it into a blues song so we slow it right down and make the dynamics absolutely massive you know right up here right down here um and we also do a otis redding song um a couple of otis redding songs actually because I, I love otis redding and i think I, I listen to Otis Redding and every single one of his one of his songs I think oh we could do a great sort of rock blues version of that um, just because it, it, they're kind of simple songs but they're just they groove and they've got you know they've got soul <laughs> and your own um, recordings if you want to and I heard you're going to release an, an, another CD next year yeah. what do your inspiration come from? Oh, too too many too many like I was saying you know it's drawing influences from everywhere possible because um, no one's really there's very few people doing something that's completely original everything is stolen nowadays everything's been done so all you can do is draw influences from lots of different sources um, pull them all together and hopefully come up with some amalgamation of all of that and that is you you know and that you make you make something different out of all of the influences that you bring together and that, that's what I try and do you know listening you know whether it's listening to soul music or uh, When, when I started out, I listened to Stevie Ray Vaughan all the time, so I played like Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then I was like, "There's no good. Well, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get anywhere being a Stevie Ray Vaughan clone." Um, so then it's like trying to get away from that and listening to different people, listening to country music or soul music, and uh, even you know, uh, you know, shreddy guitar stuff. You know, trying to trying to just bring in a bit of everything. Really, um, don't discard any kind of music because it could all it can all benefit you and help you come up with something that's original. Are you? Um, do you love creating a song more than playing live? Or uh, my guess is that you love playing live in an audience much, much more than uh, creating a song and record it in the studio. Yes, definitely, definitely. Live is where live is definitely where I um, thrive the most. Um, it's where I play best. Um, if you're if you're in the studio, you haven't got that vibe to feed off, you know, feeding off people, and you know. The, the crowd are so important for our live gigs. If the, if the crowd are really involved in the music and you can tell that they're having a great time, then we're going to have a we're going to play better. We're going to you know get involved and yeah, it's so important. So the best gigs are where they don't have to be in front of hundreds of people. There can be you know 50 people in there, but if everyone is absolutely you know just everyone's really feeling the music, then we're just going to play so much better. So yeah, it's at live gigs for us. That's that's where it's at. Now it's first time over here in Holland, but your own band. A uh, couple of days and you've been in Holland. Um, your first impression? Oh, we love it. We love it here. We've been treated so well, and all the people have been absolutely amazing. And uh, we can't wait to come back. What are your plans next to Holland? Probably uh, playing more in England or conquer all of Europe, maybe the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we, we we finished it. Easy quest. Easy question, but maybe a hard answer. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Just keep playing live as much as possible. We're, when we finish this Dutch tour, we're, we're recording the new album, and then next year it's going to be All Systems Go, UK tour, coming over, doing Holland, doing Germany, um, doing all, as much of Europe as we can. There's a few, um, we've got a few th things set up already for next year. And um, yeah, like I said, next year we're just going to play live as much as possible, because like I said, live is where we shine the best, and it's Word of mouth isn't. There's no better PR than word, word of mouth. So if people come out to our gigs, they're going to talk and you know spread the word on a on a on a real um, grassroots kind of uh, old school way of building a fan base. You know, just getting out and playing live and you know meeting the people. Well, you did a good job tonight. I'll explain you that. Another question: Are you a Fender Road Gibson guy? I seen you have both in your stock, and you had five guitars with you. What's the guitar you love to play most? Uh, uh, Telecar, my Telecaster. Yeah. It's, it's the guitar that if you were in a burning building and you had to take one guitar, it would be my Telecaster, <laughs> you know. Um, it's only a USA standard, um, but it's been on the road with me a lot. And it, you can tell by looking at it, it's, it's seen a bit of a wear and tear. Um, I, was, I used to be a Gibson man. I used to play my Les Paul all the time. Um, but I found my own style more with my Telecaster. Just found I could just abuse it. And it was still, I don't know, it just... Just a, t I don't know, just tone. Um, I just, yeah, it's found my own style with the Telecaster a lot more. Yeah. Are, you, are you still a guy who um, is searching for the particular sound by buying uh, another effect 
pedal and uh, for the guitar or a new amp or if you go into a guitar shop try all different styles of uh, amplifiers before you get hey that's a good sound um, I'm not really a gearhead at all um, I hate guitar shops just because of the people that you normally find in them that work in them they just <laughs> maybe this is maybe this is just in England but uh, maybe maybe in Holland it's fine but I, I, yeah, I hate playing guitar in guitar shops because the, all the all the staff always seem really snobby. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not a gearhead at all. I, I think most of your tone comes from your fingers anyway. Um, the way you play, you can pick up, you can play through any amp and any guitar, and you can kind of get your sound. Um, obviously, you know, I like playing around with different effects every now and then, and um, doing a few deals with a few different companies like they've given me some really great pedals, and I'm always willing to try out new stuff. Um, but at the end of the day. When it comes to a live gig, I like things to be simple, so I'm not tap dancing all through the gig, you know, pressing different pedals and just keep it simple. It's the best way. Decent amp, decent guitar, decent technique, and you're fine. Back to your um, to your own songs. If you're gonna write a song, um, what's what's first, the music or the lyrics? Um, usually the music with me, yeah, uh, but occasionally the the lyrics will come first. Um, lyrics are always the hardest part for me. Um, Are you a slang man for using slang in the in, in the language of the lyrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Example. <laughs> no, um, no. The dirty stuff, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too much. No, <laughs> that's the stuff you write that you then screw up after and chuck it away. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. It's a hard. That's a hard one. I mean, lyrically. Um, <laughs> it's you know it's always going to come from the heart so we, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I want to go into it too much <laughs> well we have a small like women anyway like <laughs> women and heartaches women and, yeah exactly it's the blues isn't it hey in a question we, we ask a lot and even a lot of young players uh, you're 24 now if you were uh, 40 still in the music business and how big are the letters written Ben Poole about uh, over the venues? It's a good question. <laughs> no one can really answer that, can they? Um, oof, I have no idea. I have no idea where I'm going to be at 40. Um, hopefully, big. <laughs> um, but you know, who, who knows? All we can do is try our hardest, and we do. Uh, like, you know, just give it everything every night. It doesn't matter how tired we are. You know, even coming over here, so it was a long trip for us coming all the way over from England and playing the very night that we we, we were coming in. And but you got you got to get up, and for that hour and a half, you got to give it 110 percent. And there's no there's no two ways about it. The people are paid to come and see you play, so you got to play, and you got to really play. So we try and do that. Are you you're as good as your last gig, as yeah, they say here. Exactly. Ben, thank you very very thank much you. for this interview. Thank when are we going to see in 14 years or in 16 years, or how big the letters will be written about the venues, but.